serene, idyllic, tranquil. Paradise? Welcome to Indian Key, the former capital of Dade County. But this picturesque rock in the bright coral seas hides the darker secret beneath its ever-shifting sands. Located in the upper region of the Florida Keys, Indian Key sits just off the coast of lower Matacumbe Island in a shallow reef known as the Indian Key Fill. Believe it or not, this barren desert island was once home to more than 150 souls. Prior to European contact, the original inhabitants of this 12-acre coral island were the Calusa Indians, a fierce tribe that dominated the Keys region through warfare and ingenious fishing methods. Initial contact between the Calusa and Europeans on Indian Key was not so amicable. In the early 17th century, a schooner of escaped French convicts from Louisiana wrecked on the island's shallow reefs. Seeking shelter on the already inhabited rock, the Frenchmen were met by a group of Calusa warriors who proceeded to kill the estimated 400 shipwreckers. The same perilous shoals that signaled misfortune to the French sailors brought great fortune to others. The treasures of shipwrecking attracted opportunists who chased riches in the Keys turquoise waters. In 1830, Staten Island native Jacob Hausman sailed down to Indian Key in his father's stolen ship. The simple boy raised in a Staten Island grocery store soon found himself shipwrecked on the shores of Indian Key. Seeing the potential in the business of wrecking, the ambitious Hausman set up camp on the island, determined to turn this patch of coral rock into a golden wrecker's paradise. The Wrecker King Hausman, as he became known across the Florida Keys, soon developed a reputation as a rapscallion in the region. Often accused of illegal wrecking activities and backwards deals, Hausman created the largest community in the Florida Keys outside of Key West. In 1831, Hausman purchased a two-story hotel complete with a bowling alley, billiard room, full bar, and sandy beach. This hotel would become known as a tropical hotel and would play host to such esteemed guests as John James Audubon, who used the island as his base for much of his Florida Keys bird studies. By 1835, the island was replete with a hotel, post office, courthouse, and saloon, all run by Hausman himself. While Hausman and his wreckers pursued wealth in the seas, many others were focused on the land of Indian Key. On Christmas Day, 1838, Dr. Dr. Henry Perrine, his wife and children, Sarah, Hester, and Henry, arrived on the island intent on growing his tropical plant company to eventually take over the fertile soil of the Florida Peninsula. On the family's arrival to Indian Key, his daughter Hester writes, I cannot forget our delight on first seeing the beautiful little island. It was truly the gem of the ocean. While on their gem of the ocean, Dr. Perrine went about building a magnificent oceanside house on the corner of Northwest and Fifth Street. On this dry rock where all life struggles to find water, Perrine planted numerous tropical plants such as agave, limes, figs, lemons, oranges, grape trees, and tamarind, much of which remains to this very day. However, Perrine's dream of a tropical nirvana was never fully realized. As Indian Key turned into a wreckers mecca, the mainland of Florida was experiencing a bout of guerrilla wars between the Seminole Indians and white settlers. Seeking to get involved in the fight himself, Jacob Hasman placed a bounty on the heads of any Seminole in the region. $200 would be granted to any white settler who murdered a native person. Additionally, Hausman had already been known to harass Seminole visitors to his hotel. Angered by Hausman's actions, the reclusive Everglades Seminole chief Chiquica launched a plan to ruin Hausman. At 2 a.m. on the night of August 7, 1840, Chief Chiquica's men paddled across the murky moonlit waters to arrive in the northeast corner of the island. A sleepless sailor wandering the key with his gun noticed the scurrying Seminole warriors and fired his musket upon them. Suddenly, the band dispersed with whooping war chants. Awoken by the loud shouts, Dr. Perrine instructed his family to hide in their turtle crawl on the coastline concealed beneath their house. Covering the hiding hole with a large chest, Perrine went out to communicate with the Spanish-speaking Seminoles. The soldiers, 
apparently unmoved by Dr. Perrine's pleas, proceeded to murder the physician and pillaged his elegant mansion before burning it to the ground. The residents of Indian Key were left to fend for themselves. Many, including the Perrine and Hausman families, were able to escape the attack while an estimated 18 people died. While smoking a cigar and watching his island burn to the ground from his escape ship, Hausman remarked, there goes $200,000. As the Seminole invaders returned home with their plundered goods, all that remained of Hausman and Perrine's ashen paradise was coral ruins and broken shards. Hausman tried to return to his island a few months later, but impoverished and broken, he eventually left, taking up a job as a wrecker on Key West. Two months later, his life was brought to an inglorious end after being crushed between two ships. His body was returned to the now deserted island to be laid to rest among his former treasures. In 1964, passing visitors noticed bones laying in an empty pit, only to find them missing the next day, except for one jawbone. Indian Key, a fairy tale island once filled with the dreams and ambitions of many adventurers, now sits in decay as a picturesque ruin upon Florida's shimmering shores. Hausman's Pearl and Purine's Eden has now been returned to its natural state, setting below the tropical sun. <laughs>